Here we go. Okay, welcome back everybody. This is week four, even though technically calendar wise, I think we're in week five, but you guys already have the basic basics of the program and, and how this all works and how it fits in your life. So what this week is, is we're gonna review the previous three weeks and just hit on the main topics that you need to know while we give I them. Know, and we're gonna go through and, and at this point, you all have had a chance to test things out, see what works, see what doesn't. And we're going to work on giving you some suggestions and ideas of how do you adjust it for you and your new, your unique thing, um, because everybody's a little bit different. And that's that's right. the point of this program is we wanted to create something that you could tweak and adjust to your life. Because if it's you just you just do it the way that we say, it's not going to work. It's only going to work for like a quarter of the population, and we want everybody to have results. So right. here we go. So like I said, we're going to review weeks one to three. We're going to go through, again, the intensive hydration and Fab Five. We're going to touch on the importance of identifying your story and how to become your very own nail care detective. And we're going to touch on the habits for happy, healthy nails and help you figure out what works for you. So on, this one's right this drill. This one's, you know, everything that we're talking about today is just a review, just to remind you, and then also that um like you said in the group that people have been um going well what do we do now well you've already been doing what do you do now um that's what the great thing about the challenge is that you've learned how to do it um so this is like where you talked about everybody starts at the beginning and we need that intensive hydration um and usually with your nails being so dry you need a lot uh um, and then like you've got two choices. We used to have the three day challenge um, the, the intensive has kind of replaced that uh, because it's so much faster. Um, so you've got those two options. Uh, basically after step one of that, you uh, can have naked nails for three days, but I kind of don't recommend it anymore. I think, I think we'll start to phase that out. Um, or after step one of doing that intensive hydration, you go straight to the Fab Five wrap. And I think, like I just said, I think I think that's the direction we're going probably for the next challenge. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you get that polish on as you guys have experienced. And this is that cycle where you just kind of, just like the little image before or down at the bottom is like, you just keep doing those things and you've incorporated them into your life already. Um, so, we don't have to go through all of that in detail. It's just keep doing what you're doing. And that's kind of what we're going to emphasize through the rest of this. Okay. Fab five wrap. Five. Um, you guys have all got it. Uh, basically, you know, two base coat wraps, preferably a ridge filling base coat. Um, if you have naturally smooth nails and you're still all young and you got great digestion and all of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not envious then you don't then you don't need a ridge filling base coat but I do uh yeah I really do um and some people can get away with one layer of base coat um I definitely need two and then two colors of uh your color two layers of your color um some polishes you can do one layer if they're one coaters uh but I've found that the five layers is what gives you uh, enough temporary strength. It's basically like putting, at least for me, it's another, it's like doubles the thickness of my nail. So we had a great, oh, I was going to grab that photo. One of the gals in the group had, uh, she thought she broke a nail and she mm -hmm. took a photo of it and really her nail didn't break, but it just peeled back all those extra layers. That would have been her nail. So that's, was the best photo. It was super right? cool. Exactly. Just, exactly. And then, you know, then your top coat, um, you decide with your lifestyle whether you need to keep doing another layer of top coat each time, you know, like every day or every other day. Uh, just realize that you are re-wetting the layers underneath and that can cause those layers to shrink. So if you find that the more top coat you're adding, it seems to be shrinking off of your nail. That's why. Um, and it just means start over. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, and again, rinse in oil when you're all done, get it all clean. So the other important part, and this has been really fun with working with everybody is helping everybody shift their stories. And really my story 
I, I, been I, it's been huge. It's, it's yes, it like reflecting back on it and like noticing in my daily life, how much that really did affect my self-talk and how I treated my nails and how I took care of my nails. And like, I wrote them off as unimportant because somebody else a long time ago told me that I did not have pretty hands. So, you know, how, how old am I now? I'm almost 40. <laughs> I'm just figuring this out. I know, so, right? Um, again, like just listen to the, the stories that you tell yourself. Are you, do you tell yourself you're clumsy, you're biter, sloppy, busy, always late? Um, I always break my nails. My nails always peel. I don't take it anyway. All of those things are shaping your results. And where is your exactly. self-image getting in the way? So we want to always continue supporting you and changing your story because it's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. um, and then in week three, we dove deeply into habit loops. So if you want more information on that, um, lots of, we have, I think it's like an hour and a half of information. It was a long on this, one. That was long. Um, but the basics, is there, there are four main steps of a habit loop that, that creates your results. So you have a cue. So like, um, for example, when my polish started shipping, I wanted, I was trying not to pick at it, but then it cracked. I'm like, okay, that's the cue. And so when I see the cue of the crack in my polish, my craving was to pick at it. And so I'm like, oh, so my normal response before the challenge would have been to go right ahead and pick at it. My response after the challenge yesterday was I put more oil on it and stopped touching my hands. It's like, we just need to leave it alone until we get home to the safety of acetone that I can take <laughs> off. Safety of acetone, I love it. So the reward that I got for that is I did not destroy my nails yesterday. Yay. Great. Yeah, and so like to take that out of the nail thing is, you know, I mean, think about it, taking a shower. Um, you know, that cue is you get up in the morning and you've either got really greasy hair or your deodorant has completely stopped working and you're like, no, I stink, I, whatever, I, that's your cue. And so then you're like, man, I need to get clean. That's your craving. And then you get in the shower and then the reward is, you smell all nice and clean. Yay. So yes, habit loops. So keep an eye out for where those happen in your life. Um, because that's where you have the power to change your response. So area number three, this is what makes all the difference. So if you, like all of these other things are still going to happen, this is your area of choice of, of, of empowerment is your response. Yeah. It's so interesting to notice this in all of our other habits. Mm -hmm. And I've learned a lot with this 30 days and just paying attention to other things because I've always already done this for years, decades. Um, but yeah. Good cool. Stuff. So one of the other strategies to help um, you change habits or build new habits or build awareness of what's going on and identify your habit loops is the process called calling out. And we talked about the Shinkansen trains of how the conductor, so go, you, YouTube it. Is that a verb now? I guess it is. Go to YouTube and search for Shinkansen. It's spelled kind of like it sounds. Um, and train conductors, and you'll you can see them pointing to the speedometer, pointing to everything, and calling out exactly what they're doing. So it's a and, way to reduce your mistakes. So and last week you didn't finish the story, but because uh, I just re-listened to it, and it was it saved a life, like a, a mother and her son. The son had gotten on the train, and the they were starting to call and the doors, the automatic doors started to close and she was trying to get in and put her in like we do in the elevator. She put her arm in and it closed on her arm. And so because of all the calling out, they realized that. And so she didn't lose her arm and her son was not traumatized. They were reunited and it was great. It was all good. <laughs> so yeah. So when you're doing your daily activities and so I've, I've, there's still times when I call it out loud but I'm much more aware. It's like yesterday because my nails were naked because I took it off and then I had to do all the sports things. So I'm like very intentionally and slowly going and doing all of the, like getting my son's lacrosse bag and helping my son load his bike on the car and all of the other, and I did not break a nail and they were naked and they've been peeling. Wow. Amazing. Oh. So <laughs> calling out, that's a way to, to do that. So habit stacking. Habit stacking. So 
again, this is, this is really where everything congeals and this is what really shifts your identity as things um, become automatic, so autopilot. So where before, if you would have had bad habits like me, where I was biting my nails, picking at my nails, all of those things. So instead of doing those things, I've sandwiched these other new behaviors, my responses to the cues and the triggers, to for to create these other tiny little micro habits or atomic yeah. habits, as James Clear, the author, would call them, <laughs> yeah. to fit into your life and dr drastically change your results. So these are all of the different images that we made. So when you sit down to work, I will swipe before I type. When I do my mani on Friday, I will pee before I polish. <laughs> when I pack my kids' lunches, I will remember that nails are jewels, not tools. Um, when I unbuckle my seatbelt in the car, I will use my knuckle to unbuckle. And I posted a video in the group of, of how I do that. And it, you know, that'll change depending on your seatbelt and all that other stuff. But, buckle. Yeah. Um, that wouldn't work for me. It just, yeah. won't. I'm not strong enough and it won't go. <laughs> so again, so it's figuring out, but it, again, it's just drawing, it's, it's doing the calling, calling out, calling attention to things. Um, and then cementing these new habits and new behaviors into your world. Oh, so that, oh, did you see? I don't know. I think you saw, I think you told me the knuckle be to unbuckle yeah. that the car seat key that we carry. Yeah. Uh, Chloe, is it Kardashian? Chloe? Chloe Kardashian has one. Yep. So yeah. So gotta take care of those nails. Exactly. Um, hers are long. Hers are long. They're, they're artificial, but they're, they're very long. Yes. I couldn't, I couldn't have really long nails with, my kids and that that's another that's a lifestyle thing when they were little and um, you know, you're picking them up you're grabbing them you're doing all kinds of things even just your child and I would have stabbed them and hurt them <laughs> well we couldn't afford nannies and housekeepers and yes this is very stuff when we had a little different lifestyle yes um, we did Okay, so that's that's kind of the summary of all the things. So let's move yeah. on to figuring out what works for you. So um, think of this as www. So what works? Yeah. What, we, what can you do better? So this is a, an ongoing again, like we had the 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 little repeat thing at the bottom. Fat five oil right. daily, all of those things. So think of this like that as well. It's ongoing. This is what goes in your life, what works, what doesn't, what can you do better? So you can continue. And so many people have been, so many people have been in the group and saying, you know, what works for them and some of these things don't work for them, especially when you're talking about products and, mm -hmm. and stuff. Like you were saying earlier was we're prepping for this at Sash Vite, top coat doesn't, it shrinks for you. And there's a lot of people that it does. Um, some of that can be your weather, just Yep. the nature of the humidity in the air anyway. And so certain things won't work for one person, but they will for another. And we get to be our own little science experiments. Yep. I, I think there's, there's so many people that they're like, there's so all these rules and it's like, no, they're really guidelines and bumpers. And you have to like guidelines. <laughs> what, what works for you? Yep. 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 Okay, so we're going to go through the basic steps and we're going to talk about some of the things that people have seen, what works, what doesn't, what can you do better, and just kind of jog your mind. Do we jog our minds? No, you jog your memory. It's it's weird. Weird. Oh my gosh, you guys. So just plant some little seeds in your head so that you know how to look through what the process is and figure out what works for you. So we talked about the naked nail hydration and how we're kind of phasing that out because it's not as necessary and it's dangerous. If you're wanting to preserve your nails, it's dangerous. So you don't have to do it. If you like doing it, go for it. Just and it, and you, when you say dangerous, that's, it's just that mm, when your nails are really, really dry, uh, as we know, when you come into the challenge, it's, they're fragile. They're fragile. So the, the longer, and this is, again, it's like the longer you go without polish, the more exposure your nails have without those added layers for additional protection. And they dry out even more. And they'll dry out even more. So even if you're the naked nail hydration and if that works for you, and if you're able to go slow and not get your nails in the dishwater or whatever, great. Well, and sometimes, yeah. life, sometimes life just makes it so that, 
you know, you've taken off your polish and then all of a sudden you've got to leave. You, you got to go off. take your kids to sports. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, oh, and suddenly two days have passed and you're like, wait, I, have, I haven't had time to do my manicure. Yeah. And so that really is then when we kind of go back is like, okay, just keep oiling and oiling and oiling, 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 oiling. Watch where you're, what you're doing, slow down so that they're still there by the time you <laughs> do the manicure. <laughs> Yep. 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 Okay. Then overnight hydrations, not necessary. You don't have to do it if it doesn't work for you. Um, the, I know a lot of people, they struggle with the gloves being uncomfortable to sleep in. I can't even sleep in them that often. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I noticed too, with, cause I have the psoriasis and stuff on my hands. When I did an overnight hydration, it's like the additional sweat that my hands produced got it too soggy. Yeah. And so the placking areas that I have on my skin with the friction of the glove, it rubbed off too much skin. And then I had a sore that had to heal. So like just little weird things like that. So if it doesn't work for you, that's fine. There are other workarounds. Um, mm -hmm. The mini hydrations that can be anywhere from 20 minutes to four hours. You know, it's like what works, what works? for you? Yeah. What fits into your life? Do you have like 10 minutes to, to, get a little extra hydration, just put the gloves on. It, uh, it's better than, than nothing at all. Um, mm -hmm. If you have hours to clean the house or whatever between manicures, do that, whatever works for you. But again, what we want to make sure that you're doing is focusing on the daily hydration. So when you sit down to your computer, swipe before you type, um, make sure that you keep up on that daily hydration. That's, that's a really important part of, of all of this, all of this. Um, do you have any other additions on tweaks for hydration? I feel like there was something I'm going to say, I was going to say, but it'll come back to me. Okay. So fab five tweaks. So we talked to Anna and I talked about this while we were prepping, but just the differences in base coats there are, and, and same with top coats, like we're talking about sash feet, your climate, your nail shape, your genetics, your natural oils, your lifestyle, the shape of your nails. And the All of I'm starting to, it's starting, to, I'm hearing more and more of this, of your nails are porous. I mean, I, we know that. I've shown pictures and microscopic things during the lives. Your nails are not solid and nothing can penetrate them. So they are porous. And this is because a lot of people have been asking about the yellow staining. It's like, I don't know why over time, the blues and the purples and the reds and the, all of these deeper colors why what is left is yellow, but it's because our nails are porous and it's just in that top couple of layers. So, so yeah, it's, and it's, if you happen to have nails that are the, the holes, the pores between your th layers are tightly packed, you're going to have different challenges than someone like me where they're, they seem to be a lot looser and I have more peeling and mm -hmm. stuff. So if my nails are going to peel the, if I let the manicure chip back a little bit it will take layers of nails with it so you know it's like finding out what works for you and it can change over time too like as you get older as you get healthier as you get sicker or like whatever it's like just be okay with things being fluid and changing and and adapting to whatever it is in the moment right um same with types of polish um so like finding one with a brush that you like that fits your nail shape, a formula that works for you. Like Anna, you've talked a lot about the Sally Hansen Insta Dry. You like it, but when your nails are longer, it dries too quick. So uh, even with within your same nails, if your nails are longer, you may need to use a different brush or polish depending on the length of your nails. Don't turn my computer off of us. Thank you. Okay. Oh, we're not going to do that again. Um, so just test, like make this be your own fun experiment lab thing, yeah. be your own guinea pig, put on your lab coat and, and test different things, top coats. Yeah. Um, even so like base coat and top coat, it's a different bottle of polish when you first get it and use the first half versus the second half, because as you open the lid, the solvents start to evaporate. So it gets thickier, thick, thickier, thickier, thickier and gummier, the more that you use it. So, you know, that'll, that'll change it. Clean up stuff. This is something that's been awesome. And I'm so appreciative of everyone in the group for all the tips that you've given me with cleanup. Um, that I think has been, in addition to changing my story, this has been what's made it work for me is the cleanup. Because when I clean up these edges, I mm -hmm. don't pick that. 
and then I it, it just feels nicer. It feels cleaner, and I don't feel like I'm in my mom's polish and made a mess of my hands. <laughs> yeah, like Corey did my nails yesterday and for the live, and um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Looks so pretty, and I haven't cleaned it up. And I'm like, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, Corey, he's Corey, Corey. that hoot a minute. It's great. Yeah. Um. So cleanup, figuring out what what works for you. There, like when I I posted in the group and asked for tips on cleanup, I got so many great tips. Like everybody's like, one had a specific brush from Twinkle Tea, and like everybody has their own thing. And then Ria's use the the orange stick wood stick and soak it in acetone so i'll do that initial thing with each nail after i paint each nail and then i'll go back and i'll clean it up with my brush and it makes such a difference so and it, does, it takes a while when you first start but you get better and you get better then with the, also the tips of polishing better of slowing down when you're polishing so see there's another slow down that helps um that you i know so hard. This is um, so hard for me. <laughs> as you get better doing your actual manicure, there's less to clean up. I mean, you look at some of these videos by, um, especially the Russian bloggers, um, and there's so many. I can't even name them all. You, you guys know who they are. I share them in my account all the time. But you watch them do it, and they do the manicure perfect. They get this perfect proximal fold line just from their polish. Yep. So they've learned how to do that technique that works for them. And, and um, practice. And this is, this is why it's so great that we do the, the, the mini before Manny, like the whole routine. Yeah. You get so much more practice, guys. Practice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the maintenance. So this has been coming up, too, of how do I deal with the chipping that for a lot of people, especially when your nails are shorter, you get a lot more tip wear. Um, because you're touching things with your, the tips of your hands versus, um, those of us with longer nails where we're, we're using the pads of our fingers more. Um, so maintenance can be just filling in those chips with the color, um, knowing full well that it's going to wear off and you'll probably need to do it again tomorrow, um, to sort of hold you over until you have time to do that next manicure. Um, for some people, putting another layer of top coat works um, to seal all that in. For some people, it doesn't. You can run, you can cap your edges with your color. That helps. You're still going to get it worn off, but you're wearing that off. You're not, you're not wearing off the tips of your nails as well. So, and, and with the maintenance, so this is, and I did a live last night when I was testing it out. Um, if this Fab Five with just the polishes isn't working, if you need to go back to acrylics or back to gels or whatever, I, I did the Orly Nail Rescue, and I'm impressed. Um, do what works for you. Just make sure that you apply it correctly and remove it correctly so you don't damage your nails even more. And if, you told me apparently the, the, the manufacturer's directions suck. <laughs> they are terrible. It was like three steps, and yep. like Cheryl and Kelly, there were a few people on the live last night. I was like, is that it? And then they told me to buff it down and like, that goes against everything Anna has ever taught me. <laughs> so no, you can buff, you're buffing the product smooth, and that's good. Yeah. And actually, those buffing blocks are great for that. Yeah, Just don't, I don't have, don't have one, though. actual nail plate. Don't use those, but they're great for the... So basically, you didn't know, but the Orly Rescue is you're just apply, applying a thin layer of acrylic. Um, so... It can be, when your nails get longer, again, like nail strengtheners and nail hardeners, because that's a thinner layer, it can make your tips too hard and they won't bend. Mm -hmm. So that for you, because your nails are shorter and you're just trying to get a little bit of length, is perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's just the tweaks, figuring out yep. what works for you. Yep. So again, yeah, it's like, what works, what doesn't, what can you try differently? Just just experiment, try new things. And how do you take that stuff off? You soak it. You soak it. You soak, soak it. If the instructions have, the manufacturer's instructions has nothing on how to remove it, which Whoa. is extremely, yeah. extremely ne negligent. Um, but you just soak it. So with acetone, it's gonna take a while. Yeah. If, it, if you let it soak for 15 minutes and it seems like nothing has happened, you need to rough up that surface of the product with a little bit of a, a of a coarser nail file 
do not use 100. Um, I would use like 250 or 240, um, something like that. And it'll rough it up enough so then the acetone can get in there and break it all up. Yeah. Um, okay, nail health tweaks. So again, people are having more breaks. It's sad. It's winter. Heels. It's sad. So like, like that's why I tried the Orly Rescues because it was starting to peel and it was peeling in a way that it's going to like go down my nail. So I'm trying this to see if it'll adhere the layers together and give it a little extra strength. Day yeah. one. So far, we're doing great. We're so good. Um, yeah. Adjusting. <laughs> so with the peels, I mean, look at your diet. Look at your stress levels. Are you drinking enough water? Um, have you tried a supplement like Biotin? Is it a good supplement? You could try a couple different brands. And again, you're not going to see anything for four to six months with right. you taking Biotin is a really um, important B vitamin. Um, and if you're, unless you're eating a f absolutely perfect diet that you've spent forever and you eat 11 servings of fruits and vegetables and all of that. And it's all freshly picked because the nutrients degrade when they go from farm to store. Right. Right. Uh, you know, otherwise we're going to need some vitamins and some supplements. Uh, so biotin is great. The only challenge is that for some people, biotin by itself can cause acne breakouts. Um, and so then you, those people have switched to a skin, hair, hair, nails and skin formula, which has a few other ingredients that then help. And somehow that works. Magical. Magical. So again, it's like check your check those things, see what's working. Yep. Um, but just gonna, have it. You're gonna have setbacks, you guys. You're gonna setbacks are okay. They're okay. And so, well, this is part of of one of the the added values of the group is we're there to commiserate with you. It's sad, and also cheer you on because hey, this right. is a new thing. Do you want to try a new nail shape this time? Are you gonna? What kinds of different manicures are you gonna do while your nails are short? Can you test out different nail arts? Uh, like, do you want to try a different color palette? Like, look at this as an opportunity to explore something new. It's like, this is a laboratory where we're learning new things. So again, right. as, you're, as you're figuring out how to tweak this, go back to your wet nail polish method. Put on your little detective cap and stuff and pretend your nails are coated with a wet polish and go throughout your day, throughout your routine. Like we talked about in week, week three, we went through in detail of how do you map it out? What activities during your day are good for your nails, hazardous for your nails, or meh. So like what's going on? And if, if you're, once you're able to draw your brain's attention to what's going on of like, like the whole crime scene thing, like clue of I broke my nail, what was I doing? So as you're, you're able to learn from your mistakes or from your accidents right. or whatever and take extra precautions or, or, you know, whatever needs to happen in your life to change the results. So again, if we go back to this, once you're aware of, what the whole loop is that's going on, this is where you can change. You can change your response. So once you've identified what your nail crimes were, you're, you will be more aware moving forward of that hazard and you can take a different route. So just And like Corey helps me with some of this. He'll notice me getting in and doing something and he's like, uh-uh, you're going to screw up your nails. How awesome like, is that? Do it. Just get out of the way. <laughs> like, <"Thank you." laughs> so it, it's awesome when your family supports you too that's great and and if you don't have family that supports you that's you have the blissettes we are here for you and we will support you even if nobody else does because you know like i've shared that was my world i did not have support for taking care of my nails i would i would get in trouble for it and it was something that i ended up just like hey that's not worth it go away they're ugly, no. ugly nails anyway. So again, this is my story. My story. Okay. So um, pay attention to your story. When you change your story, you change your results. And we're here to support yeah. you in that. Um, and then the, we had the four laws of behavior change. So once you, you're, you've identified something, you've identified your nail crime or whatever, and you want to change it and make a new ha habit, remember to make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, make it satisfying. And then if you want to break an old habit, make it invisible, make it unappealing, make it difficult, make it unsatisfying. So this, these are tools that will be very helpful for you as you are looking through and trying to solve problems and build new habits and change your results. Right. So. All right. So we want to finish by going through again in detail the ultimate nail care routine. So 
But you guys have been doing this. You're what? professionals now. Yep. You, you know, you, you've been doing this for 30 days. Um, you, you've got it. You've got it down. And there's, there's nothing to worry about. You've figured out the things that work for you. If you haven't, that's okay. Uh, it's highly possible, especially if you have some stressful event that happens. In six months, you're going to be starting over again. Yeah. And that's just the way it is because your nails will be weaker. Um, you have surgery or something like that. I mean, these are big things that affect the way your nails grow. And so well, if you think about like the analogy of you, when you step in a river, you never step in the same river twice. It's the same thing with your nails. It's like in six months, you're going to have whole new nails. Well, unless you have really long nails because <laughs> they don't break. But right. It's, it's always changing. So the part that's on your nail bed. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's always changing. It's always moving and that's okay. And if it, like all of these things, it's the circle of life. I'll sing some Lion King for you. <laughs> I'm not, <No. laughs> uh, I won't do that. But, um, we just really want to encourage everyone with all of the love of, of just let this be, um, the experience and ever going, let's see. Okay. Here's an analogy. I don't, uh, we can post a video of it, but there are, there's a sect of uh, monks that they do these very, very elaborate sand mandalas. Beautiful. Amazing. They spend so much time painstakingly putting every single grain of colored sand to build this masterpiece. Once they get it done, what do they do? Wipe it all off. This is like, oh my gosh, you just spent so much time and you just... And it wasn't about the end. It wasn't about the it end. It wasn't about the end. It's the process. And so this was something that was really helpful for me in parenting my kids because I would make all these plans and I would have my schedules and I would have my project management and all of these little things. And then somebody gets pink eye or somebody has diarrhea or like we have to go do something else. And like everything that I did, it was like that mandala. Like I created this beautiful masterpiece and I was going to get things done. And then it's like, it's all gone. It's like, okay. We'll just right. start over and do it again. And that's okay. And that's the point. And that's breathe. the purpose of this. Just yeah. breathe. So with your nails, when you have a setback, think of it as an opportunity. This is like, what, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do, do different? It's not a bad thing. Nothing's good or right. bad until you place judgment on it. That's your, that's your point of power. That really is a, okay, we're going to get a little personal development team, but that is such a huge thing. And it really, really shifted my life um, when we did the Bob Proctor stuff and you like learning that of nothing is good or bad until you place judgment on it. Yeah. Like it's, it's, if you sit with that for a minute, when you look at your life and you go through a day of like, Oh, this thing happened. And then this happened. This is terrible. Life is awful. Those are stories you're telling yourself. And those inside those stories, you are the judge and jury placing that meaning on it. If you take away that meaning that you're placing on it, it's not good or bad. It just is. And right. so if, if, if it just is, that means you have the control, you have the power to shift what that means to you and how that affects you in your daily life, which is, it's life changing. I'm just going right. to okay, I'm done. Okay. Awesome. You're off awesome. so, your, your off your box. <laughs> a little drink after that one. <laughs> so, so I'll go over this real quickly. Of, you guys know this, you daily, you, you oil your nails as many times as you need. Um, whenever they feel dry, whenever your skin feels dry and you're just like, oh, and keep your travel kit with you. Keep these things there. You will use them when they are in the places you hang out. Um, um, obvious. Yes, exactly. And so then weekly, you know, for some of you, your manicure is not going to last the whole time. So yours is going to change a little differently for me. I can do a manicure pretty much weekly um, and get it to last that long. So, you know, between your manicures, do a little mini hydration. Um, the one that's really important is pushing back your proximal fold to separate it. What you're doing is separating it from the dead cuticle on the nail plate. So you do want to release it. Cheryl and the live last night had a great tip. She will soak her, her orange wood stick in oil and then gently do that to push back her proximal fold. That's like, actually really smart. That's very interesting. 
I always do mine when I'm like in church or standing in line sometimes at a red signal. But it's just you're releasing that because my cuticle does stretch out my proximal fold. So I have to do that every five days. Um, uh, I choose not to spend my time doing the 20 strokes of nail filing. Some people are really good at that. You can do your nail filing while you're sitting and watching something on Netflix or whatever. Um, for me, I just wait about three weeks and then I cut them down shorter. Um, and then for me, that Fab Five, that when I came up with that, that just really, really, really rocked my world. Um, it made everything better. Um, and then monthly, you can do this every two to four weeks of removing that cuticle. Um, we just had somebody in the group, I think, uh, she, was, she was using our cuticle remover tool um, properly, but her, like you, her layers are looser. And so she was actually scraping her nail, scraping layers of her nail off. So then the suggestion was, okay, let's go to like a silicone type of brush where that's, it's softer and it's squishier. Um, and for some of you, maybe the cuticle remover product, um, what do we call it? Simply Gone? We have so many so many names of everything. <laughs> anyway, um, for some of you, that may be a little too harsh for you, especially because it does have water in it, which is why we don't feel the one sitting there very long, as well as the lye. Um, so maybe that product doesn't work for you, and maybe you're the type of person who needs to get in the shower and just have the shower soften that skin up, and then you can gently scrape it off with your nail. Uh, you know, there's lots of ways to get the job done. Um, and again, doing that mini or mega hydration and then trimming or filing your nails every three, you know, if you file and you like filing every week, great. If otherwise like me, I cut them and I file them to the shape I want. Boom. 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 Um, <laughs> and then the routine. So yep. fab five oil daily, mini before Manny. And just keep on going like the Energizer Bunny. Keep on, keep on. I don't know if this new generation knows the Energizer Bunny. That's I it. don't know because so many people watch Netflix and Hulu oh. that the poor regular stations who have those. Well, yeah. anyway, we anyway. So if if you don't know Energizer Bunny, Google or YouTube. I'm using it as a verb again. YouTube Energizer Bunny commercial, and you'll have yeah. a lesson. Of yeah. what we were subjected to before we could skip exactly. ads. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it just became part of our dialect, a part of our languaging that yep. in the United States. So yep, yep, yep. So again, throughout your day, use the wet polish nail polish method. Pretend your nails are wet and go and look where you're leaving fingerprints. Um, and you know, it's keep keep paying attention to your story. If you, you're getting results that you're not liking, pay attention. It's like, okay, well, what's, what stories am I telling myself? What's going on? And that's it. Well, you guys have got it. it. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, you okay. meant it. Yep. So. Anyway, so keep hanging out in the nail bar. We're all there. We have some fun ideas for moving forward. Um, I think I'm going to give a little sneaker, but what we want to do now is um, start working with color and working with everybody and color and how to choose colors and how to pair colors and color, 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 color. So, um, fun, 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 fun. All that in. So take everything to the next level. So thanks everybody. Yep. And thanks for your patience and your participation and all of your love. Um, it's great. You we're honored. It's been wonderful. And, and we're so happy you're part of our world. So exactly. take care everybody. Bye. Bye. Hey.